In this video, I'll be taking a look at the PM50 programming wizard, which is just one of the ways you can program your PM50. When you apply power to your PM50 for the first time, you'll be greeted by this screen with options for quick setup, import configuration, or exit. Click once on quick setup to get started with the programming wizard. Within the programming wizard, you'll find menu options for screen, input, output, and Wi-Fi. We'll start from the top by clicking once on screen, which is where we can do some widget configuration. You have up to four widgets that you're able to configure here, which are identified as screen numbers one through four. For this demonstration, I'll be configuring screen number one, which is already selected by default, so I'll just click next here. We can now choose a display style for screen number one. You'll see that gauge is selected by default, and that's actually what I want here, so I'll just click next. Now we choose our signal type, which determines what value will be displayed by the gauge. This can be either the real-time analog input or the totalizer. In this case, we'll leave this set to analog input and I'll click next. Next, we have display units, and if we wanted to, we could enter custom units, but we will leave this at default for the demonstration and click next. Here we have our minimum display value for the gauge. I want this gauge to display 0 to 100, so 0 will be my minimum display, and I'll just click Next. For the maximum display value here, I have changed this to 100, and then I click Next. And now we can just apply those changes, so I'll click once on Apply, and it will bring us back to the Programming Wizard menu. Now if I wanted to configure additional custom screens, I would click on Screen again and select which one I'd like to customize. For now, I'll go ahead and click on Input to get started with Signal Input Configuration. The first thing we'll do here is select our input type, and in this case I'll be connecting a 4 to 20 milliamp signal generator, so I'll select Current and click Next. Here we have our current range, and since I'm using a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, I've selected plus minus 20 milliamps. We'll leave the input sample rate set to 10 per second, which will be plenty fast for this demonstration. For display unit's decimal point, I've selected zero since I don't need a decimal point for this. I'll be scaling my 4 to 20 milliamp signal to zero to 100 with no decimal places. Our signal will be linearly scaled, so two scaling points, which is the default, will be sufficient here. For scaling type, we do have an option to apply signal, but I'll be entering the values manually for this demonstration. Scaling point A1 will be the low end of our input signal, which is 4 milliamps, so I've entered 4 here to represent that. Display point A1 will be 0 in this case, because 4 milliamps will represent a value of 0%. Scaling point A2 will be the high end of our input signal, which is 20 milliamps. I've entered 20 here to represent that. Display point A2 will be 100 in this case, because 20 milliamps will represent a value of 100%. Now I can just click Apply to get back to the Programming Wizard menu. Next I'll click on Output and configure one of the available set points. Set point 1 is selected by default, and that's what I want to configure here, so I'll just click Next. And I want this to be based on the relative value, so I've selected Relative for set point assignment. I want this set point alarm to trigger off of a high value, so I've selected absolute high with unbalanced hysteresis. I've entered a value of 50 for the set point value for list A, so when my input signal is greater than 50%, the set point alarm will be activated. I won't be using hysteresis for this set point, so I've entered a value of 0 for hysteresis. The set point enunciator is a banner which appears around the edge of the screen when the set point alarm is active. For set point enunciator type, we'll be going with the default, which is normal. We will also leave the set point enunciator color at its default of red. And we'll do the same with set point active color at its default color of red. We won't be using any delays for this demonstration, so the on delay I have set to 0 seconds. Same with the off delay, that's also going to remain at 0 seconds. For the reset action, I'll leave this set to auto so that the set point alarm automatically resets when it is no longer being actively triggered. And finally, output logic will leave at its default value of normal. Now we can just click apply to get back to the programming wizard menu. 
Now I'll click once on Wi-Fi to get started with some network configuration. The first thing you'll do here is click once on the slider to enable Wi-Fi, so it will appear as it does in this slide. Then click Next. At this point, you'll be prompted to create an admin password. So just click on that field and enter your password. And once you've done that, you'll be prompted to re-enter and confirm the password. Now you'll see that the passwords match and you can click confirm to accept the password. From the factory, the PM50 is configured as a Wi-Fi client, and now we should enter the SSID of the router that the PM50 will be connecting to. Then we can click Next. Here we enter the password of the router that the PM50 will be connecting to. Now we can just click Apply to get back to the Programming Wizard menu. Finally, we can click Exit to exit the Programming Wizard. You'll get a message that initial setup is complete, and you can then click Exit. Once you've done that, you'll be brought to the PM50 homepage. Further configuration options can be found by clicking on the gear icon at the top right corner of the screen and logging in with your newly created admin credentials. And that's it for the PM50 Programming Wizard. Thank you for watching.